Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I was going to show you how to find diamonds at home. And we will also be tossing in a couple of diamonds from the Crater of Diamonds State Park in Murfreesboro, Arkansas. And I will show you how to recover these beautiful rocks. Okay, we're back. So, what you're going to need, first of all, is material that is washed and classified through at least a quarter inch screen. And you can see all the mud and all the dirt's been washed out of these. And uh, so, you'll definitely need that. This scooper here allows you to fill your Saruka perfectly you don't want too much material because then your uh, heavy minerals won't be able to work their way to the center that's the whole purpose of these sarukas is to concentrate all your heavy minerals like diamonds into the center so I'll show you what this is used for later um, so you'll want a bucket to set your saruka on you'll grab your scooper nice full scoop sometimes it takes you know half half of one because you don't want to spill any material hope you guys can see all this okay so we'll get one more half scoop okay seems to be good if you don't put enough material in when you go to to make your center and you do your uh, flip on your Saruka bed, you'll have cavities and you don't want that. Because if you have cavities, your diamonds are gonna probably fall into the cavities and you'll just have to rework it or look for your diamond on the tray, which I'll explain to that later on in the video. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I use a Saruka. Um, I see a lot of people doing it wrong. Um, it's something you don't learn in a week of mining it takes time and patience and you will master it so first of all you'll need a tub and if you're using a round saruka like this you want to use a round tub because just the motion of the water being in a, a rectangle or a square tub and using a round saruka that's going to have an effect on making a good center so it's best to do the bounce that gets all your heavy minerals down to the bottom and you want this submerged in water. You don't want it all the way in water like that, but you want this bicycle rim in the water and where you can see the material floating. And then you want to do this, that, which we all see. And that's all I see people do is this and kind of rotate it. And then this, and then flatten it out. And then that, again, you know, that that's good and all, but every time you do that, it stirs up all the heavy minerals and you have to pretty much start over. So what I like to do is give it a good bounce, do the side to side, and yeah, you're gonna get wet. Rotate it and bounce it. Do that again and then grab it here and rotate it and then shake it again and bounce. Shake, grab, rotate it shake and then bounce and then what I've added to this is instead of let me bounce it instead of doing this the whole time which you just need to do that like four times and then you bounce it out and I've added a little shake hope you can see that just a small little shake and rotate it that to keep all the heavy minerals on the bottom. Okay. You probably couldn't notice, but after a while you'll see some holes of air popping up out of your center. And when you see these holes, that means you're done. The, all the heavy minerals are in the center and it's just trying to get air out. So it's 
making those bubbles. So. And you need to let it drain for like 10 seconds. You don't have to sit here for one minute and hold it. That's good enough. As you can see, it's all nice and even. You don't want your gravel higher than this rim at all because then you're, you can't get your heavy minerals to even move. And not enough gravel, when you go to flip it, you'll have a bunch of cavities and cracks and you'll lose your diamond. The purpose of this is to, when you flip this over, your diamond will be on top and you can pick it out with a small plastic spoon. Never use tweezers. If you try to grab a diamond with tweezers, it'll just sling across the room and you'll lose it. So let's go ahead and flip this. Okay. Now as you can see, we have a nice center. Lots of spinel. That's the black shiny rocks. If you watch my previous video, identifying heavy minerals I explained the spinel and how it's a good indicator it's the black shiny rocks there um, these blue rocks is barite that's a very good indicator and all this white little ramen noodle looking stuff is calcite and it's gonna be in your centers because it's heavier than all this jasper and out here is your lamp lamprite ring you know that's where the the diamonds were formed in so i don't see anything on here and notice how it's nice and packed there's no there's no cracks in it like that when you flip it and or it don't look like you know when you flipped it it don't look like that like i see a lot of people's you know you flip you flip it over and it looks like that your diamond is going to sink and you won't see it so let's go ahead and make a center with two diamonds in it and maybe we will see them on the uh when we flip them um so now we're going to uh drop this diamond you can see that we're going to drop this into the uh gravel on the saruka and see if we cannot find it on the center that back up for now so you'll want a full scoop of gravel okay all righty now we will Toss the uh, diamond in. Throw that bad boy on in there on top. Here's an idea what it looks like with all the other jaspers and. Uh, oh, I lost it. They're easy to light. They're really easy to lose. Okay, so let's try to find it. <laughs> So first off, you want to bounce the material. That gets all the heavy minerals to the bottom. And then do the side to side. Grab it, rotate it, side to side. Do that about three, four times. Rotate it. Bounce it good. And kind of shake it. My little trick that I've learned. Shake it, rotate it. That really helps keep the minerals in the center. When you do the other method, the really side to side, it just stirs everything up. It centers, but yet it's stirring everything up at the same time. Okay, I saw the bubbles form in the center. When you see those bubbles, you're done. Let it drain for about 10 seconds. No need to drain for a minute. That's just going to wear you out. And if your gravel is nice and packed and loaded at the right material on the Saruka, you don't have to let it dry at all, really. All right, I'm not sure if y'all can see the uh, Saruka bed. Okay. 
Now let's do the flip and maybe we will see diamonds on the center. Or one diamond. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. Lots of spinel, lots of barite. And uh, most of the time, I've only found maybe three or four diamonds on the center bullseye area. Most of my diamonds out of 27 were found right along this ring of the, the gravel. Okay, and every now and then, and I've heard stories of people finding them way out here. So you want to look all the way out here as well. Because some diamonds just don't travel well to the center. Like I say, most of mine are spotted right in here. So I'm not seeing the diamond. So we know there is one in here. So the next step is to place it into something with some walls. Another bucket would work great. These little spoons are awesome to scoop out your diamond. I'll show you that here in a minute. You don't want to use tweezers. You try to grab a diamond with tweezers, it's going to shoot across the room and you'll lose it. it won't be seen again. So you just take your, uh, like I say, the diamonds could be all the way out here by that lamp right. So start with your center. Throw it in your bucket or your gold pan. And all this stuff's wet, so it sticks to your fingers, and small diamonds will stick to your finger. I've had several diamonds under a 10 point, and they stick to things. My diamond tester, they'll stick to my fingers if they're wet. So diamonds will stick. Scoop all this up. Okay. A lot of times you'll want to uh, take all of this, but I've already worked this material, so we're just dealing with material that's been searched and worked through. I have confidence my diamond is now in this pan. And if you want to speed up the drying process, you just take all your material and stick it on this cookie sheet or a piece of pan and easily dump it onto it. See all this all this is sticking. So get a little tap. That'll get the diamonds to not stick. Okay. Alrighty, let's go get this stuff dried up. And all you do is stick this in the oven at about oh 290 degrees, 300 degrees, and let it uh bake for about 15 20 minutes until it's dry all this other rock will get will uh you know dull and get get dried out but the diamonds will stay shiny and you know it takes a lot of heat to melt the diamonds so you won't you won't hurt the diamond all right let's go get this in the yes this pan is very hot so make sure you uh don't touch it all right, welcome back. We got the gravel dried. It took 10 minutes. And it's just a little wet, but you can spread it out. It'll dry really quick, get a fan going. Okay, so what you want to do is get you a gold pan. I hope you guys can see this. Next, dump all this material into the gold pan without spilling it. So that could be your diamond. Okay, and this is what we call looking on the tray for your diamonds. It's pretty much the final step you can do. You can, you know, bring your material home, and so let's get started. You'll want a small cup. Take a scoop out. Sprinkle some on here, just a little bit. Spread it on out. I think I found around maybe 
five or six diamonds like this. Just normally small. I think my biggest diamond found on the tray was a 13 point. And it's mater material I had sitting at the house for over two years. I decided to rework it and I found two ugly chewed up diamonds. Give it a good shake. And the good thing about these pizza pans, you can turn this while you look and just different angles will help make the diamond shine. So let's see what we got. And a magnifier works great. You can just raise this, have one of these attached to a table, an office, or a desk magnifier. Really helps uh, see those small diamonds. Because even those two points to ten point whatever, if it's a flawless diamond, it's worth some money. I don't care if it's a two point. If it's perfect, you got some money there. Especially from Arkansas because those diamonds are up to 20 or is it, I think it's 30% stronger than African diamond. You can't take an African diamond and cut an Arkansas diamond. It's just not going to cut it. So this is basically it. You just kind of search your tray. We know we have the diamond in here. It's just a matter of time. There's a garnet. Nice garnet. I'm not seeing it here. Okay, so I think another gold pan. Another gold pan and take all this material and kind of shake it on into it and, and inspect it as it goes. The magnifier really speeds up the process. I'm not gonna bore you guys, this could take some time, so. Nothing yet, nothing yet. And, um, if you're out surface hunting at the Crater of Diamonds, to me, the best time to go is right after a rain, a good hard rain, and when the sun's not out. When the sun's out, everything shines. The mica, the quartz, the spinel, and it's all fool's diamond. So, to me, when it's cloudy, that's the best time because a diamond is gonna shine if it's got sunlight or not. It's gonna give out that, that shine. So that really will increase your odds if you go right after a rain and it's a cloudy day and don't get me wrong the sun will definitely give it a little more sparkle but it gives everything else a sparkle and it's just frustrating the best diamond miner one of the best james archer his wife found a diamond before he ever did and he was determined to find one and he walked that field for four years and never found a diamond well, he picked up a shovel and started washing his gravel and, and going through it and the man found over 7,000 diamonds in 30 or so. uh, wet sifting and classifying your material and breaking it down like, like I've done here. That will nothing there. Let me kind of speed this up a little. it right off the bat Ugh. okay nothing I can see I found several diamonds guys just get my pants this, this right here and kind of just scratching through it like I say it's, it's gonna have its own shine compared to all these rocks almost like a piece of metal like a piece of mercury on some of these diamonds
Okay, oh, there it is. Right there. Let's take the camera. Easily, easy, nice and easy.